What does string, weights, and dome strokes have in common? And how do they relate to the ancient engineering models we can see around the world? We all know that dome strokes have produced some of the most beautiful, gravity-defying strokes that we can see around. And they've been utilized for engineers for thousands of years. This is beautifully illustrated by Brunelleschi's dome on top of the Maria Santa Fiore in Florence. And while the physics behind how this dome stone ends up is no longer up for debate, but how Brunelleschi was able to construct his dome is, and has stumped engineers for many years. That is at least up until now, when researchers from Princeton and from the University of Bergamo are able to mathematically prove how Brunelleschi was able to construct his dome. This gives us great insight behind the physics of how Brunelleschi was able to construct his dome and teaches us some lessons that can be learned to even modern engineering today. Let's find out a little bit about Brunelleschi's dome, how it relates back to some string and some weights, and what the researchers at Princeton and the University of Wagama actually found. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer based in Australia, and I produce videos around engineering and how to progress your career faster. So if you do like that type of content, please subscribe. So now let's get into it. The efficiency behind shell structures is due to them primarily utilizing the compressive force of a material. This provides engineers with a structure that is both thin, lightweight, and very efficient. And engineers have been utilizing this for over 5,000 years, with the oldest known cell structure dating back to 300 BC in old Mesopotamia, in an old burial vault uncovered there. It can also be seen throughout all of ancient Rome through many of the arches, such as in Roman aqueducts, or even in the Colosseum, and seen throughout all the Renaissance of Italy, with their amazing churches that was constructed. And even in Barcelona, where Gaudí made some magnificent structures, none other than the Sacra Familia. There are also very many modern day structures as well, such as the Sydney Opera House and the JFK Terminal in the USA. Shell structures can also make many forms, such as domes, barrel vaults, arches, and even warp surfaces. You can even form shell structures from folded plates. However, all these structures have a very similar feature. They have the flow of force primarily in the compression action. So if we take a bit of material, it's quite simple for compressive forces, especially for something like a column. It just transmits straight through. However, this shape doesn't form the beautiful arches that we see in dome and shell structures, which form a curve. So how were the ancient engineers able to do this? It's quite simple and quite ingenious. And all they needed was a bit of string. So if we take a bit of string, we can see, we take that same compressive force, it curls up into a ball. It doesn't compress like the object we were just seeing. And it has no bending capacity either. As you can see, we can curve it around quite easily. However, if we take the two points and we pull them together, we can see it forms a perfect arch. So now if we flip this shape upside down, we can now take that same force in compressive actions. It's quite ingenious and quite simple. What they also found out as well, if you add a bit of weight to that string, then take that same shape, you can see the shape has slightly changed. And the shape has changed based on the weight that's applied to it. This is beautifully illustrated by the Sacra Familia produced by Gaudi in Barcelona, where he produced a complex string model with weights that equated to the weight of his towers of his cathedral. This tower was so complex that engineers had to go to the aerospace industry, where they were utilizing FE analysis to design their planes. This was actually the birth of FE analysis for structural engineers today. And all Gaudi needed back in the day to design his tower was some weights, and some string. Isn't that quite simple and quite ingenious? Now, let's get back to Brunelleschi's dome. This dome is one of the largest masonry domes around the world, standing at over 42 meters tall with a diameter of 44 meters. It's truly monumental and really hard to understand the true scale of it without actually seeing it. And Brunelleschi was able to construct this dome without the need of temporary supports. And any temporary support structure was made out of timber back in the day. And there was not enough timber in Europe to be able to support this structure. For Brunelleschi to be able to construct this, 
had to crack 130 year code to even build this dome. So what he produced was truly ingenious. It even stumps engineers today. Brinless's his dome is actually a twin dome structure. So it has an internal structural dome, plus an external facade dome that we see from the outside. There's actually a skeleton built with inside that dome as well. To solve the spreading problem, Brunelleschi had a series of horizontal chains that wrap around the dome, much like the straps around a barrel to tie it together. These horizontal chains form a hexagonal shape around the dome. Brunelleschi also included a series of vertical ribs around the corners of the hexagon, all curving towards the center point of the dome. As you can see from some of these videos, the scale of it is truly monumental. And the fact that they're able to construct it without the need of any temporary timber supports is truly amazing. While the physics behind this dome was always hypothesized, no one was actually able to prove how Bruno Esco was able to do it until up until now. What the university researchers at Princeton and the University of Regano were able to do was mathematically prove the physics behind it. So how were they able to do this? What the researchers did as they built up a model of the dome in pieces in a method called a discrete element modeling, where they built each element on top of each other and they found something truly amazing. So what the researchers found out was it was to do with the way the dome was constructed. What the dome has is a series of vertical bricks radiating around the dome as it's being built up, known as electrum, with a series of horizontal bricks known as a pipeline. So as the electron radiates around the dome, it allows them to lock in the paint plane horizontal bricks and wedge them together, effectively keeping them in compression. So this makes the dome self-sustaining as it's been constructed. So what Brunelleschi did was truly ingenious. He had to crack over 130 year code to be able to do it as well. This was later built on to a double electron later throughout the Renaissance where they had these electrons crisscrossing around each other, essentially forming a crisscross around the whole dome. So it's likely that later engineers built upon Brunelleschi's original idea of this electron to create even more impressive structures. And all they needed back in the day was some string and some weights to reduce their masterpieces. Isn't it quite simple and quite ingenious? It even pushed some of the complex analysis software that we have now. So, is there any other structures you'd like to cover me in detail? If you do, please comment below. Or do you want me to go more in detail about shell structures and truly understand the magnificence of what they are? And if you did like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. It helps get this video out to more people. So I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.